Hello, Fashion and Costume Design class. This is Heidi Tungsep, your instructor. Nice to see you all. Um, I'm going to show you just a couple of projects that I've made in the past, quite a few years ago, that were made without patterns from the store that I kind of piecemealed together. And I used paper and I created my own patterns to make them. So hopefully by now you've watched the video of the panel skirt, the panel mini skirt. I have a couple examples of my own that I've made in a similar way. So it's kind of variations on that theme. Um, the first, it's a little bit hard to see the pattern from back there, but I decided to make it a little bit funky. So it's a paddle, it's a panel skirt, like the video that you saw, but I obviously made a longer version of it. I took my waist and hip measurements and I determined that this was the size that I needed and I needed six of these panels. I pinned it all together before I started sewing just to make sure and I kind of put it on to make sure that it would fit me. And just when you do that, make sure you're not poking yourself. You have to put it on very gingerly to not get injured. Um, I don't want any of you to get injured in the process of this project. But I also decided it would look a little, it was more my aesthetic to make it um, flip the fabric over every other panel. I thought it looked a little more interesting or funky than if I had made every single panel on um, the right side of the fabric. Usually fabric has a right side and a wrong side. So the right side of the fabric is usually the brighter, bolder side of the fabric. And then the wrong side um, is the more faded, duller version. Some fabrics you can't tell the difference between the two. But I decided to flip mine alternating every other one. So I put six panels together. And you can see that when I stitched them together, I sewed just a straight seam. And then I didn't sew all the way down to the edge. I left a slit here. Because I wanted to, when I put it on, it kind of has the effect of swishing as I walk. <laughs> I don't know if you can really see that. But it, has a it creates a very different effect than if I just had a straight A-line skirt. So once I got to this point, instead of continuing to stitch the two pieces together, I just turned the fabric over and I made a very simple hem. This is not very professional, highly tailored work. But this is... These are clothes that I've worn many times and gotten a lot of compliments on, and we're just going to go at this level for this class, for this project. I think this is enough. So I wanted to show you some kind of more um, approachable projects that I've done. So I just folded over the edge and I stitched along it all the way around to finish it off. You can see I'm always working, you always flip your project inside out and you work on the inside. So all the messy stuff is on the inside. When you flip it, to the right side, that's where you see the nice clean edges. And then, because this is just a regular cotton and it doesn't stretch at all, I needed to put a zipper in it to make me be able to get in and out of it. Um, you have a couple options when you're working with cotton. You can either make a casing, which is kind of a tube at the top, and you can put a drawstring in it to cinch it so you can get in and out of it, or you can put elastic through that so that it stretches, or you can put a zipper in it. So I put a zipper in mine, and you can see my zipper is exposed. It's a bright blue zipper that's exposed. I don't remember if I did that intentionally or not. <laughs> Most professional clothes, um, the fabric comes together so that it covers up the zipper. In this case, again, I don't remember if I meant to, I, I'm guessing I did not mean to show it, but it's okay that it shows because it's the same color as the fabric, and it's kind of fun. So I put my zipper in, and then at the top I put a little, I don't know if you can see it, but a hook and eye just to finish it off, and I sewed that in by hand. And then I hemmed the top to make a nice, even hem. So, I'm going to show you just basics, step by step each fabric, and then um, there'll be more tutorials going more into detail of how to actually execute some of these things. I have a website that I'll show you on how to actually insert a zipper into clothes. So, the next thing that I made that's kind of a variation on this panel skirt is this kind of hippie top that was my aesthetic a few years ago. I was a little bit more of a hippie. And so I created I had all these extra sort of calico, I think they call them, fabrics. <laughs> and um, it was that you can recognize this piece from the skirt that I made. But this is a lot of kind of the fabric that people use for quilting. And you can buy a whole bunch of these little foot by foot pieces that are really used for quilting, but I decided to make a shirt out of it. So I made all of these equally sized panels. So it's kind of a baby doll shirt. Um, and then I made a panel at the top for the bust area. And actually, I did use another shirt that was a similar size and a similar empire waist, a higher waist style. And I used that to trace around to make my paper pattern. And then I made this. 
And you'll notice that I put some seams in for darts. I'll talk about that a little bit more. And then I have a side piece and then a back panel. And then it's kind of a little bedraggled right now. But when I put the straps on, I decided to give it a little more personality by having the straps cross in the front, the ribbons zigzag or make an X in the front rather than the back. So that's that. Um, I also made, I think this was a ninth grade, but um, I made a tie skirt and a tie top. And I don't know where the necktie skirt is, but I'll show you a website on that. Here's, um, with the leftovers of the, t the neckties, I made a top. And it's a little bit much to wear both together. But it's a, I actually sometimes still wear this shirt. I think it's kind of cute. So I sewed all of the skinny parts of the neckties together to create kind of a block of fabric. And it stretches sometimes in kind of weird ways, but once I get it on, it looks good. Um, again, I had to create another kind of curved stitch to accommodate the bust area. And then, I really liked, um, I don't know if you can see this, I really liked the way that the top of the neckties, that zigzag pattern that they create, so I decided to keep that rather than cover it up. So on the side, rather than just doing a simple straight stitch, excuse me, I had to, I decided to um, expose the zigzag of these neckties and show that on the outer edge because I think it's kind of funky. And then with the straps, I did the same crisscross. I just sewed up the straps and then I made um, straps on them. And I sewed them in the front and then I crisscrossed them in the back. And then I included these buttons and I made some buttonholes. And I can include, I'll try to find a tutorial on buttons and buttonholes for you too. Um,